The boundary condition defines the state of support, or displacement constraints, at each node of the finite element model. This tutorial demonstrates various aspects of the boundary conditions, such as, defining boundary conditions in terms of nodal degrees of freedom, assigning them to selected objects, boundary conditions in local coordinates, prescribed displacements, and spring boundary conditions. The last three subjects are in another file. In order to start the procedure of defining and assigning boundary conditions, choose Boundary Condition, Structure, Item from Assign menu. Then, Boundary Dialog appears on the screen. The dialog has items, representing the nodal state of restraint. For this plain strain model, there are two restraining degrees of freedom, delta x and delta y, corresponding to two nodal displacement components. If the delta x item is checked, the displacement is restrained in x direction. If the item is unchecked, the displacement is unrestrained. Likewise, checking or unchecking of the delta y item defines the restraining state of the displacement in y direction. The restraining state of each node is specified as such by assignment of the boundary condition. Either nodes or curves can be selected for the assignment in this plane stress case. Thus, only the node selection and curve selection tools are enabled, while the other tool buttons are disabled. Now, the curve selection tool is on. So, select a curve by clicking it. Press assign button. The boundary condition set is assigned to all the nodes on the selected curve. The boundary condition of each node is displayed by the symbol of a pin support, which restrains the movements in both x and y directions. The set can be assigned simply by double clicking. Double click a curve. Then, the curve is assigned with the current set. Click the node selection tool, in order to assign the condition, directly to nodes. Double click a node. Then, the node is assigned with the boundary condition. Or, select multiple nodes, using rubber band selection, and click assign button. Then, the current set of boundary condition is assigned on all the selected nodes at once. Press delete button, to erase the current set, together with its assignment. If there is only one set of boundary condition, its assignment is deleted, but the set itself is retained. Let's define a boundary condition, restrained in x direction, and released in y direction. This condition corresponds to a roller, supported in x direction, and moving in y direction. Activate the curve selection tool, and assign the set, to the left boundary curve of the model, by double clicking it. The assignment is represented as a series of vertical rollers, Click New button to create a new set of boundary condition. Likewise, the horizontal roller can be defined by restraining Y direction and releasing X direction. Assign the set to the bottom edge of the model by double clicking it. There are Add and Replace radio buttons in the dialog. The significance of these items will be explained using this example. Add and Replace are the options to determine the alternative results of an overlapping assignments. Let's set the option to replace and see how it works. Assign the horizontal roller to the top edge of the model by double clicking it. The assignment includes the corner node, which is already assigned with the vertical roller. Replace option makes the previous assignment to be replaced by the new one. Thus, the vertical roller is replaced by the horizontal roller at this corner node. Let's undo the assignment to try add option. Check, add, radio button. Assign the boundary condition. The boundary condition at the corner node is altered to a hinge support, which is created by adding the new assignment to the existing one. The drop-down list of the boundary condition shows set number 3, which was automatically created for the hinge support. The next is to show how to remove boundary assignment from selected objects. Select the top edge curve and press delete key. Then, the assignment is stripped from the curve. But the assignment on the corner node remains as before. It is because, the assignment on this node, includes that of the left edge curve. In order to delete the hinge support on this node, press the node selection tool, select the node, and press the delete key. The boundary sets are not affected, by deleting the assignment, from the selected objects. This can be confirmed by set number 3 in the drop down list. Set the boundary condition to vertical roller, using the drop-down list. The original assignment of the edge is recovered, by assigning the vertical roller to the node. Let's change the boundary condition to set number 3, using the drop-down list. Select nodes at the top edge, and assign the hinge boundary condition. 
there are alternative methods of representing the boundary conditions, other than symbol mark. The second method is to display the constrained degrees of freedom. Choose mark by constrained DOF item from assign menu. Then, the boundary conditions are represented by the lines indicating the restrained directions. Choose enlarge item to enlarge the size of the marks. The restrained displacement components are more distinctively represented by the line marks. The third method of representing the boundary condition is to display the set numbers using mark by number item in assign menu. Then, the boundary conditions are distinguished by their set numbers. Mark by symbol item from assign menu may be used to recover the previous roller and hinge representation. The next example is a case of a three dimensional solid model. There are three nodal degrees of freedom, each of which can be turned on or off. For this case, the boundary conditions can be assigned to nodes, curves, or surface meshes. Thus, these three selection tool buttons are enabled, and others are disabled. The surface mesh selection tool button is now pressed as the default setting. Let's restrain the movement of the left side of the model in X direction. Retain the check of delta X item and release other items in the dialog. Double click the left surface mesh to assign the boundary condition. The assignment is represented by the short lines, indicating the restrained direction. The option of the symbol mark is not applicable for this three dimensional solid case. The bottom face is to be restrained in Y direction. So, create a new set by clicking New button and restrain the displacement in Y direction. Assign the set to the bottom surface mesh by double clicking it. Enlarge the size of the line mark to make the state of assignments more discernible. It should be noted that a new set is automatically added due to the assignment. The additional set, number 3, is identified in the drop down list. This set is created as the result of the add option. Adding set 1 and set 2 makes the restraints in both X and Y directions. This new boundary condition is applied to the edge nodes shared by the left side and bottom surface meshes. Create the new set, which is set 4, and restrain in Z direction. Assign the set to the front surface mesh by double clicking it. Then, three additional sets are created automatically, as can be confirmed in the drop down list. In order to identify each of these new sets more clearly, choose Show Current Set Only Item from Assign Menu. Set 5 is the current set solely in display, and all the other sets are hidden. This set is created as the result of adding set 1 and 4, with restraints in X and Z directions. The edge between the left side face and front face meshes is subjected to this boundary condition. Set 6 is a boundary condition, restraining the displacements in X, Y, and Z directions. This set is assigned to the corner node shared by all the three surface meshes. Set 7 is assigned to the edge nodes shared by the front and bottom surface meshes. Uncheck Show Current Set Only Item from Assign Menu in order to recover the original display of all the assignments of the boundary conditions. Using Mark by Number option, the assignment on each node can be identified by set number. After changing the selection object to Curve, the boundary conditions can be assigned to the selected curves. For example, double click the circular curves on the front surface mesh, and then, the current boundary condition is assigned to these curves. The next example is a case of a two dimensional frame. There are three nodal degrees of freedom, that is, two translational and one rotational components. For this case, the boundary conditions can be assigned to nodes or curves. Thus, these two selection tool buttons are enabled, and others are disabled. The node selection tool button is now pressed, as the default setting. Set 1 is defined as a boundary condition, restrained in X direction. Select a node, and press assign button. The nodal boundary condition is represented as a vertical roller. Pressing new button create a new boundary condition, that is, set 2, restraining the displacement in Y direction. Select a node and press assign button to assign the new boundary condition which is represented as a horizontal roller add a new set again and define the set as restrained in both x and y directions assign the set by double clicking a node the boundary condition corresponds to a hinge support create set 4 and define the set as a fixed support by restraining all the components 
Assign the set to another node by double clicking it. The assignment is displayed as a fixed support. By scrolling set number, recover set 2 with restraint in Y direction. Assign the set to bottom nodes one by one using double clicking or in group using rubber band selection. Scroll the boundary condition sets and recover set 4 with fixed support condition. For a frame analysis, boundary conditions can be assigned to structural members, modeled by curves. Activate Curve Selection tool in order to carry out the assignment in terms of curves. Double click the bottom left curve. Then, the fixed support condition is assigned to all the nodes on the curve. The nodes on the right bottom curve can also be assigned with hinge supports in a similar manner. The next example is a case of a three dimensional frame model. Before proceeding with assignment of boundary conditions, let's view the spatial feature of the model using three dimensional rendering. Each node of a three dimensional frame has six degrees of freedom. And the nodal boundary condition is defined by restraints of six components. Therefore, the three dimensional case requires more complex representation of boundary conditions than the two dimensional case. Owing to such complexity, symbol mark representation is not provided for a three dimensional frame model. Instead, straight lines and circular arcs are used in marking the restrained displacements and rotations. This will be explained using the three sets of boundary conditions, prepared in advance. Set 1 is defined as restrained in all six components, and assigned to the three nodes in the back row. Set 2 is defined as restrained in three translational components, and assigned to the three nodes in the front row. And set 3 is defined as restrained in three rotational components, and assigned to the three nodes in the middle row. In order to make the representation more discernible, Magnify the representation of lines and arcs by choosing Enlarge Item from Assign Menu. Let's identify the representation of each rotational component by turning on and off the restraint states on the dialog. Likewise, choose Set 2 from the drop down list and identify the representation of each translational component. The last example is a case of a plane strain model, combined with two-dimensional frame members. A plane strain model has two nodal degrees of freedom, while a two-dimensional frame has three nodal degrees of freedom. In such a mixed case, the boundary conditions are defined with all nodal degrees of freedom, included in the model. Thus, two translational and one rotational items are shown in the dialog. Set 1 is defined as restrained, in x and y directions. Activate the Curve Selection tool, and assign Set 1 to the bottom edge, by double-clicking it. Create a new set. Define Set 2 as a vertical roller support, by releasing the restraint in Y direction. Assign the new set to the left top edge. Create Set 3, and define a fixed support condition, by restraining all components. Switch to Node Selection tool, and assign Set 3 to the three frame nodes. Scroll to Set 1, which is assigned to the bottom edge. Change set 1 to fixed support condition by restraining the rotational components. Then, the boundary conditions of the bottom edge are changed to fixed supports. However, the change does not affect the analysis results because the bottom edge nodes do not have the rotational degree freedom. The fixed support of the bottom edge has the same effect as the hinge support. This is the end of the tutorial about defining and assigning boundary conditions.